all for coming out tonight to the NAACP Candidates Forum in the Hickman Mill School District. We have two seats that are open at the present time that the candidates are running for and the two incumbents uh, are rerunning for their positions back and then uh, the other candidate hasn't made it and then so I'm going to introduce you all to Dar in the order that they filed too. So it's Daryl Curls, George Flesher, these two are the incumbents and Eric. Mr. Eric Lowe, and he's the uh, person that's running also for one of these two positions. The other person that's not here, his name is Terrence Jones. Terrence Jones. See, I have to make sure that somebody keep me up on it. So I just want to welcome you all here and let you all get started. And our moderators are both in AACP officers here. And um, could you all introduce you all selves? And I appreciate you coming. Uh, my name is Joyce Downing. I'm a member of the Political Action Committee of the Kansas City branch of the NAACP. My name is Anne Marie Jackson. I'm also a member of the PAC, as we call ourselves, the NAACP. Rosa James, um, Education Chair. Michael Downing, the Acting <laughs> Chair of the Political Action Committee for the NAACP. And the other officer in the hallway? Uh, Pat Harlan, uh, member of the Fifth Branch Committee. Have I covered all the officers from NAACP? Yes. Okay. Robert Lowe. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm getting the office. Um, yes, sir. I'm coming to you. I said, and the um, <laughs> officers. Ooh, go ahead, Robert Lowe. He okay. is. Robert Lowe, second vice president in NAACP. Okay. Have I covered all the officers for NAACP? I already did. I got her. All right, so I'm going to turn it back over to you all. Thank you for coming to our district. And I have followed most of the uh, candidates forums that you all have had prior to. And a lot of this year is an honor for you all to be in our school district. So I want to share with our two board members and the incumbents that this is the first year they've come to our district, but they have gone to all the other school districts and we were not in that last year. So we're in the fold this year to make sure we're on top of things. So you all have the list that they have for you? Yes. Ms. Davis. Yes. Bye-bye. And I would like to, uh, <clears throat> to thank you for coming to this NAACP forum. As an NAACP event, we're nonpartisan. We're an inf informational program. I am here serving as a representative of our chairman of our committee, Mr. Sanford who is hopefully going to be back with us soon. He is my leader, and I hope that I do him justice in this forum. And you know the moderators, you know the timekeeper, Rosa James, and the candidates. And we're ready to begin. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. We're going to start out with a two-minute introduction. And in front of you, you have several points we'd like for you to cover in your two minutes. We'd like to know what you believe the role of a school board member is, why you are running for Hickman Mill School Board, and what skills you bring to the position. And we'd appreciate it if you would describe your previous involvement with the Hickman Mill School District and anything else you can squeeze into two minutes. Go right ahead. Uh, Rosa James will be flipping the numbers over there and letting you know when your time is up. When she flips the one that says zero stop, that means finish the sentence you're on and we'll move on to the next person. Um, we'll start in the order in which you filed. Mr. Curls, would you go first, please? Yes. Um, thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, echo the sentiments of, of the previous two speakers yes. and thank the NAACP for sponsoring this forum tonight. Uh, uh, I guess, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Daryl Curls. I uh, am currently on the school board. I uh, was uh, appointed to the school board in 2008 and ran for a full term uh, in 2009, so I'm finishing up a four-year stint. Um, I guess the first question here says, what do you believe the role of a school board member is? I believe that the role of a school board member is to set policy. I think that uh, as, as the board uh, uh, works together in regards to what takes place in the district, our main function is to, to support the administrative team and the staff, to support the teachers and try to uh, improve education and academic excellence uh, with our students. I believe that as a board member, we are it is incumbent upon us to uh, communicate with parents, communicate with educators, and communicate with the community in, in regards to what's taking place in this district. 
and how we are planning on going forward to making sure that we provide the best quality education for our kids that we can. I believe that also a school board member is uh, responsible for making sure that uh, uh, the district say, stays solid. I mean, you, we have a fiduciary responsibility as well to make sure that we uh, pay the bills, make sure that the uh, uh, students have the necessary tools and things that they need to uh, make sure that they succeed in life. Why are you running for the Hickman Mills Board? Um, I'm running uh, for re-election. Uh, I have been on the board, as I mentioned, for four years now, and there's some things that I think that I want to uh, continue as well as I'd like to see implemented. Uh, what skills do you bring to the position? I believe I bring leadership skills. I believe I bring experience. Uh, I believe I bring a lot of community involvement. Uh, I have deep roots in the Hickman Mills community. I've been in the district. I've lived in the district for 27 years. And, and during that 27 years, which actually goes into the next question, please describe your previous involvement. Um, I've been involved in various co uh, community endeavors in the district, uh, so I'll stop right now. Thank you, Mr. Curls. Mr. Flesher. My name is George Flesher. I'm a senior board member of the Hickman Mill School District. Um, the problem of going second is Daryl gave all the correct answers ahead of time, so without being redundant, uh, yes, he is correct. On, on all that he has said, um, we have we have we have those roles that he previously spoke. I am running for the Hickman Mill School Board because I feel I, I constantly find out that there's things that need to be accomplished that haven't been accomplished. Both of my children have gone to school in the Hickman Mill School District. Both of them have gone through early childhood through the school system and both graduated. Uh, both of my kids have uh, gotten scholarships. Uh, that is something that I've been watching uh, constantly as I go along in my role as a uh, board member. Um, one of the reasons that I am good on the board member is my background and my education is in business and business administration. Uh, one of the things that we have accomplished during this time is to stay solvent, and that is a, a, a very hard task in these days and times. Uh, to stay accredited and keep the accreditation moving up and getting more points. Uh, that is also another thing with the transit population that is in the Hickman Mill School District. Our uh, our guidelines are for over the state are not favorable to that. We are uh, we are uh, graded on the people that are coming into the district that we have no control over. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be changed uh, changed with the school district, but most of the stuff that needs to be changed is down in Jefferson City. Uh, that's where a lot of the stuff that you really need to be paying attention to is the state representatives because they're the, they're the ones that hold the purse strings. Without the purse strings, we have trouble going places. Uh, my previous involvement, uh, I've had so many things that have been accomplished that I've accomplished during my tenure here. We have gone from everything from all day kindergarten. We have now, you know, we we had didn't have that before. We didn't have air conditioning in the schools. We had it before. We just now got, uh, in, the, in this past year, at Ruskin High School, I have uh, the Academy of Engineering, which is very, very sought after United over the United States. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Mr. Lowe. Good evening. My name is Eric Lowe. Um, I believe that the role of a school board member, first and foremost, is to ensure that the board and the district is doing everything that they possibly can to make sure that students are receiving a quality education. As a school board member, the one employee that you're in charge of hiring is the superintendent, and the superintendent utilizes the policies that you set and uh, make sure that they're applied across the district uh, to ensure that the standards that are set are met. I'm running for school board because I believe I bring a different skill set to the board. I am currently a practicing attorney. I was born and raised here in the Kansas City, Missouri area. I went to, U to the University of Missouri, Kansas City and received my undergraduate degree before getting my law degree from Indiana University, Bloomington. I believe that my skills in analysis uh, and problem solving and also in making sure that, that people don't fall through the cracks will be helpful in ensuring that all sets, all subsets of the district have their concerns and their needs met. Um, 
I have a lot of previous involvement uh, in the community more so than I do in the school district. Um, I just moved back to Kansas City a couple of years ago as I was away from law school. Uh, when I was in law school and prior to law school, I did on a couple of occasions come out to the school district and speak with students about planning for their futures and achieving the goals that they set for themselves. Um, and as far as the community is concerned, I've worked with a number of different organizations right now. I am a member of a couple of different bar associations. Um, in addition to that, uh, I previously have experience working with Jumpstart, which is a program funded by AmeriCorps that works with children in early childhood to ensure that they receive the skills that they need to be successful when they go into kindergarten. Uh, one of the things that is very essential that we know, studies have shown, that the biggest factor that will help students achieve as they proceed throughout their educational career is early childhood development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before Ms. Jackson asks the next question, we do have index cards available um, in the back. If people in the audience would like to ask questions, they can fill out a card and just slip it to either uh, Anne Marie or myself, and we will get your question in with our questions. I'm Cindy Davis, of course. Her name is Alice, and she's no longer, she's not here tonight, so I'm going to have to assist this is down in here. But this applies to all three of you. What do you believe the biggest issue in facing this district, and how do you propose to solve it? And I just want to all first. You want me to go first? Yes. Um, I believe right now. Uh, the biggest issue facing our district is uh, probably money. Uh, I've been, as I mentioned, I've been on the board for four years now. And every year that I've been on the board, we have had to make some drastic budget cuts. Uh, I mean, we've had to cut deep. And I, I don't want to be too presumptuous, but I believe that we will probably have to make further cuts this year in order to uh, balance our budget and to keep our school doors open. And that's what we have to do first. In order to educate students, we have to be able to keep our doors open and maintain the buildings and, and the proper learning place. So uh, I, I think that that's one of the biggest issues. There's, there's two or three big issues, but right now I think that the budget is something that we have to contend with, we have to face, we have to deal with. And uh, I think one of the reasons, or one of the ways of solving that is, uh, as Mr. Fletcher mentioned earlier, is uh, we have to work on our state uh, legislators. Uh, they have to do something with the foundation formula, because right now it is not conducive to a suburban school district. It is geared toward urban school districts. And uh, it, it's just not fundamental, fundamentally feasible for districts now to operate with the funding formula in the, in the way that it is now. So I think that if we could uh, put some pressure on our representatives, uh, get the right people on board to make sure that we uh, try to secure more funding for our district as well as other districts, I think that that will help us get better educate our kids. I would like to echo some of the things that Daryl said. I, I do think funding is, I mean, <clears throat> money is the root. And for us to be able to educate the children the way that they needed to be, they need to be educated is proper funding. And I don't think we have ever had that, but we've had to deal with what we were given. Um, it, it's hard. It's hard to see when we're trying to make plans for the next year. When uh, one month we're going to have a uh, a million dollar shortfall, but by the next month we have a three million to four million dollar deficit. It's hard to plan. It's hard to get new teachers. It's hard hard to keep programs already there. I've been involved in the school district quite, quite a while, and I've been through some major cuts prior to even when Darrell came on here, and I see how devastating that can be to a district. Uh, it's devastating not only to the school district, it's devastating to the community. Um, people, uh, people that are in Jefferson City need to see a little bit more about what's going on 
there, like I said, there are other issues that are there, but the, the funding for education is on the forefront at this point. Yes. I believe that the biggest issue facing the district right now is student safety and safety on the campuses. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with, but even just last week, there was an altercation that took place after school at Ruskin Heights involving several students that got in a fight. Uh, the, the police were called to respond and students prevented police from responding uh, to the call and breaking up the fight. I think before we can expect students to perform adequately and to live up to the standards that not only we expect of them, that we believe they are capable of achieving, we have to show them that we can provide them with an environment that is safe, where they can feel comfortable, not only in school, but after school, when they're around school premises. Because if students don't feel safe, the last thing they can worry about is focusing on the education and the lessons that their teachers are trying to provide them. As far as reaching that goal, while there are while there is security provided on campuses right now, typically I believe one officer per school with some floating officers, I think Center School District has used a great formula, which is ensuring that not only are the security that is used by the school district paid for and employees of the school district, but they are trained to work with students. I think you can ensure that students are going to experience a safer environment if you put police who are concerned, who are committed, who are actually, who care about the students and the environment that they're providing, if you make them available to students, you can then become to begin to understand and learn what's really going on on the subsurface of what's happening in school. The students know what's really going on that sometimes teachers and administrators might not know. And if students feel safe and they feel like there's someone there who is advocating for them that wants their environment to be safe, I believe that they will be forthcoming and letting teachers know about things that might take place that affect student safety. Mm -hmm. And if you can provide students with a safe environment and let them know that you control the schools, they will then begin to be able to focus on learning. Okay. Thank right. you. We're going to change the order so that Mr. Fletcher doesn't always have to follow Mr. Curls. <laughs> <laughs> Or Mr. Curls didn't have to be first. <laughs> <laughs> Two ways to look at the same thing. Um, in the recent State of the State address, Governor Nixon mentioned the foundation formula, as you alluded to, um, saying that we need to find a way to make it more fair and more predictable. Um, do you have any thoughts about how this might be accomplished? And um, what additional measures should the Hickman Mills Board be considering that might be necessary in terms of either increasing revenue or decreasing spending. We'll start with Mr. Flesher and continue to go. To the okay. well, first, first of all, on the uh, let me take the back part of the question first. We were already addressing some of the issues on spending. We have our administrators are going over the monies, <coughs> the monies that are going to be available and uh, bringing forward to the board what what budget cuts and that that might might have to be made. Unfortunately. The way that the state is giving out the money is kind of like Kansas City weather. Give it another half hour and it may change. So it's it's hard to it's hard to plan on money for education when you don't know how much you're going to get. Um, I know the governor has said and has made a commitment for funding the formula, but sometimes that doesn't get doesn't get through the House and Senate. They got these little add-on bills and add-on here that ends up taking a little bit here and a little bit there. Once you get into the Hickman Mill School District, what you will find it, and, and, I, and I'll go back to this, we have a transit population in this school district. You have some of the schools that will have over a third to a half of new students in a classroom per semester. A teacher, and that's hard for the teachers to teach. It's also hard for the students to learn when you do that. The way the state has it set up is we get graded on what these kids do all year. And if you've got kids that are coming into the district and they haven't had a full year of learning with the district, then it's, uh, it's a little bit unfair. So the state really needs to get back in and take a look and see how this education formula works, how things are going to be funded, and that not all schools are the same. And for whatever reason, they have, uh, they can, they go, uh, the state goes from one extreme to the other. They'll either go real heavily to take care of the urban schools, or then they'll go real heavily to take care of the rural uh, rural schools, but they don't take care of the, 
they let all the schools that are in the middle kind of fall through the cracks, and it's just, it's kind of, it's almost like who who yells loudest to get the gets the kind of money that needs to be made. Thank you, Mr. Love. Um, as far as the school funding formula is concerned, I think there are a couple of ways of addressing that issue. First and foremost, the issue isn't with, while the issue is with how the money is allocated, the issue primarily is with what are used as the factors in, in analyzing and creating that formula. I think the, not only our school district, but other school districts around the state could be better served if the formula gave more weight to students who are receiving free and reduced lunch in our school district. It's approximately 77% of the district, of children in the district are receiving free and reduced lunch. If the formula gave more weight to students on free and reduced lunch, students who um, are, who, where English is a second language, other factors affecting the family um, as far as financial feasibility or even background, uh, is it a, you know, the makeup of the household, as I would say. Um, all those things affect the funding, and, I, and the only way that you can really change the formula is to ensure that you are having people advocate for you adequately in Jefferson City where these decisions are made. And I believe that if we create uh, relationships and partnerships with other school districts, both locally and across the state, to raise these issues, we can get other school districts on board on these issues, which in turn, if we can get things passed, will help to increase the funding formula and also provide some more financial stability to the district. Um, as far as measures that the board should be considering as far as increasing revenue and decreasing spending, obviously since I'm not on the board right now, I am not in, in touch with the finer points of the finances in the district at this point. Um, but I think what we have to understand is no matter how, no matter if we have a limitless budget or a limited budget, we have to manage that money properly. As you can see in Kansas City School District for 20 years, they had free reign of how much money they wanted and it didn't fix the school district. Money purely isn't the problem. Money alone isn't going to fix the problem. You have to ensure that, that, that the educators you hire are committed to making sure that students receive the education that they need and that they come here for. Um, I, I agree with uh, what both of uh, these other individuals have stated. Uh, I believe that uh, there should uh, be more weight given to districts that are in need. I, I think that one of the things that probably should should happen is is that um, I think a committee should be established in regards uh, to looking at how you can best weigh the districts and their needs. Uh, I think right now uh, there is a committee in Jefferson City Education Committee, obviously, that kind of looks at it and talks about how uh, schools should be funded and funding formula itself. But I think that what happens is and sometimes those individuals are not in touch with what's actually happening in the schools. I think that if you establish a committee of people uh, uh, that actually have knowledge and that have been in the schools that know what's taking place uh, from across the state uh, and to sit down in a room and come up with a plan that would be more f equal and favorable for all districts and submit that to whether it's the education committee in Jefferson City, whether it's the governor or whoever, but I think that they need to listen to the people who actually have hands-on experience in these schools to know what's taking place because I think it's just a snapshot and it's not like one size fits all, but they seem like they are, that's the direction that they've gone. So I think that they need to look at it from another perspective or be given a, a different perspective. Uh, the second part of it is what additional measures would, should the board be considering? Right now, uh, we, like I said, the budget is, is one of the big things. I mean, our cash reserves are, are, are depleting. And heaven forbid if we had some type of catastrophe, such as what happened in Joplin, and we had to rebuild schools or do something of that nature, we would be wiped out. You might not even see a Hickman Mill School District again, whether it's a tornado or anything else. Okay. I'll start with Mr. Lowe this time. I have two questions, actually, for you, Mr. Lowe. Uh, the first one for all of you guys, uh, all three of you, and most 
recent annual report card for the state, hidden males earn nine of 14 possible permits. Which of these two permits more than 2010 in December? The district announced the 12 in 2012 campaign and focus on achievement of 12 out of 14 next year. What role do you see yourself as a board member playing in the 12, in the 12, 12? Oh, it's hard to say. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 effort. And also, Ms. Below, uh, one of the audience asked this question. At the present time, Hickman Mills have off-duty policemen in our district, and they want to know why you should, uh, they should have uh, security guards, hire the security guards still off-duty policemen. So it's two questions for you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'll begin with addressing the 12 and 12. My, as I stated previously, as a board member, the one place that you truly have impact is in the hiring of the superintendent who carries out your policies. As far as reaching the 12 and 12, while the district last year met, got 9 out of 14 points, and the five years before last year, the district every year either had 6 or 7 points. Uh, and of those 6 or 7 points, academically prior to last year, the district only met one of the academic achievement marks from the state. Of the 14, there are seven that are academic benchmarks. Only one of those seven was met for five of the six years prior to last year. As a board member, we have to do an effective job of holding not only the superintendent, but administrators responsible for the job that they're doing. Students, while using uh, standardized testing isn't the only way of measuring student success. It is a minimal factor in addressing or ensuring that students are learning on a yearly basis the topics that they need to learn to be successful as they continue to move forward in school. We have to ensure that if students aren't meeting those benchmarks, that we are putting a policy in place to make sure that their failures or their inability to meet those benchmarks is addressed by giving them more help over the next year. And we also have to ensure that we are employing teachers who are doing a good job of educating our children. As teachers are evaluated, if, they're, if the way they teach is not meeting the goal and they've, give, they've been given several years um, to meet those marks, that has to be taken into account. Obviously, we can't hold the teachers hostage for students not, not meeting academic benchmarks, but there has to be responsibility and accountability from the bottom up, from parents to community members to teachers to principals to the superintendent and to ourselves as board members. The way students perform is a reflection of the job that we are doing and we have to take it very seriously. I got the stop sign. Do you want me to answer the safety question or not? Why don't we give an extra minute for the second question? Give him one minute for the second question. I as far as the safety issue is concerned, uh, school, yes, off-duty officers are utilized by the school district uh, at campuses around the district or at schools around the district. But the importance of employing the, the security guards yourself is you need to have security that's creating a relationship with the students who lets the students that are attending schools know that they themselves are invested in ensuring that the students are provided a safe environment every day and that they themselves care and are concerned with ensuring that nothing that shouldn't happen at school happens at school. And the problem with off-duty officers is while they are on the campus and they do provide, uh, provide a helping hand, those off-duty officers only get involved when actual civil laws are broken. And so if you have a student who's being disruptive, if you have a student who's doing things that are unacceptable but don't reach the realm of actually committing a crime, those, those officers aren't able to respond. So instead of having three officers, you essentially only have one officer who can respond for, for all needs that the school has. So we do favor a private security firm? Not a private security firm necessarily. I am, I am in favor of, instead of utilizing off-duty cops, putting people utilizing officers that work directly for the district. So I guess private in that sense, but they are they are employed by the district and therefore they are accountable to us. They are accountable to the school board. They are accountable to parents. They are accountable to students. Whereas off-duty officers have no accountability to the people in the district. Thank you. Mr. Clark. 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 Mr.
question, but... <laughs> well, which one do you want me to do? <laughs> okay, we want to do the 9 out of 14 possible Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm really pretty proud of what we've done, and a lot of it has to do with, with the student uh, population that we've had, the way that we are graded. Um, unfortunately, we're graded the same as a Blue Springs or a Lee Summit, and our student population isn't the same. They're not taught the same. They haven't been raised the same. So uh, I'm very happy with us uh, moving up to the 9. I think it's very feasible for us to move up to the 12. Um, but it's just stuff that we have to constantly work with. And we are currently uh, sharing the information because we're in a cooperative with other school districts uh, around, the, around the metro area. So that, that isn't something that we're just trying to do this all by ourselves. We have information that we're constantly uh, uh, getting information from the center school district and the uh, Grandview school district that, that we share to try to make make things uh, successful for our kids. Um, was I supposed to answer the second question also or? No. Okay. Yes, that was just uh, it's only the same. Okay. Oh, it's okay. I'm sorry. Um, well, I, I too agree uh, with Mr. Fletcher that we have come a long way in regards to uh, achieving the 9 out of 14. Uh, however, we still have a lot of work to, to do. I don't think that that's no question in anybody's mind. Um, I believe that uh, the 12 in 2012 is achievable. I'm 100% in favor of, of that and I support it. And I'm going to do everything I can as a board member to help achieve that. Uh, to achieve that, we have identified those areas that we are uh, falling behind in and that we need to improve on, and steps are being made to make sure that this year we do try to improve those areas of concern. And I believe that with the uh, right superintendent uh, who works for us and the vision that that superintendent has, and it's passed down to the uh, teachers and the administrators under her, then we will achieve 12 in 2012. And I believe that those areas of concern will be, uh, or those areas will rise. We will improve uh, test scores. We will improve those areas this year. And as a board member, I'm going to support staff and administration in any way that I can to make sure that we achieve those goals. And I believe that uh, First of all, we have to make sure that, you know, the students are in school and that the parents are in, in, included in the students' learning because we can't only just teach them here. It takes a family and parents to help teach students as well when they aren't here. So that's what we need to do. As a follow-up, this question is from an audience member. Um, they'd like to know what is who is responsible or what is the district's res responsibility for overseeing the SES program, that's the tutoring program, and making sure students are actually present. So if the incumbents could address what efforts the district is currently doing to bring up low test scores, and then if the, um, if the new candidate would also address what you would do as a board member to bring up test scores and specifically addressing the tutoring program? Uh, I think currently, oh, am I first? Yes, I'm back sorry. to you. Okay. I, I think currently uh, teachers are working with students in individual groups to help improve test scores. I believe that uh, they are also working with them on one-on-one -on -one basis as well. Those two students that uh, are, are really struggling in certain areas such as math or, or communication arts. I believe that uh, there are more hands-on, one-on-one uh, tutoring taking place because, like I said, we are really uh, trying to improve those areas of concern and communication arts and uh, math are, are those two areas of concern. Uh, I believe that as long as they continue to have that type of interaction with the students and as long as we can get parents to help out in that endeavor I believe that we will see an increase in test scores. Uh, I forgot what was the second part was there another? Uh, are you familiar with the SES program and and are there measures in that enforce students being actually present for the tutoring sessions? Um, 
I'm not for sure if there are measures being placed. I'd have to check on that, to be honest with you. I'm not 100% sure if there are measures, and I don't want to speak out of turn. Thank you. Mr. Fletcher. Um, and I can help Daryl out a little bit on this, because I was a little bit more familiar on this. Uh, yes, they, the uh, uh, our administration does check up on kids that are signed up that don't show up. Uh, calls are made home to talk to the parents, uh, let them know that a student has, has not attended, and try to get the, uh, try to get up with a one-on-one -on -one conference on why they haven't attended, and trying to explain to them the need for attendance. Uh, our our different programs. We've got some really good programs to uh, help kids at least uh, at least on the secondary level. We've got uh, the Plato program, which is for credit recovery. We do that, and that's been very successful helping uh, helping kids graduate uh, graduate because you know the first couple of years in uh, in high school and uh, toward the graduation, kids really don't take a whole lot seriously. You know they. They're up there. It's a it's a transition from from the middle school to to the high school, and uh, you know it's just that age thing. Well, kids don't really take a whole lot seriously. Uh, so the Plato program is very good for credit recovery. We also have another program called the Twilight School. Uh, Twilight School is to bring kids in that basically haven't you know the the people have given up on, and to get them in there so they can help with the help with the grades, uh, and that they do that uh, at least three times a week. Another three times a week, we, uh, we have after school tutoring for kids that need help and t uh, for teachers that, uh, that come in there and give their time directly after school to help kids bring the grades up. Um, I wish we could do more by going out and getting kids, but the kids that ask for help are getting it. Uh, our problem is that some of the kids don't go up there and ask for help. And we don't want them to fall, between, to fall in between the cracks, but a lot of that comes from, from the family structure or just different things in society now that, you know, uh, different um, things that keep kids keep kids going. Um, but we have some programs in place to make kids successful. Thank you. Mr. Love? Yes. Um, not serving on the board, I'm not as familiar uh, with, the, with the inner workings, but I will say it has been my understanding that while calls are made, uh, to the parents for kids who don't show up, that there isn't a formal policy as far as requiring students to be there. While I understand if students or parents ask for help, it will be provided, we've got to understand that the onus should be upon not only the parents and the students to ask for help, but for the teachers who are interacting with these students on a daily basis and who know best whether or not they are, no, whether or not they are learning what they should be learning day in and day out. And if they aren't, it should be the responsibility not solely of the teacher, but of the teacher in cooperation with uh, higher administration principals and even on up to the superintendent if necessary to ensure that parents understand the importance of their kids receiving this extra help. Uh, we know that the further students go in school not meeting the academic benchmarks, the lower, the higher the likelihood they won't ever get caught up and that they won't graduate in high school. So while it's important that we provide services to students are, who are in high school, we've got to understand that it's also very important to start reaching out and helping these kids when they're in early childhood, when they're in elementary school, and when they're in middle school. Because if a child already isn't learning the things they know in elementary and middle school, and they get to high school and they're still at a fifth or a sixth grade level, and now they're more concerned with being made fun of or looking like they don't know what they're doing in class, We've, we've gone, we've let it go too far to truly serve them and get them the help that they need. So not only do we need to ensure that those services are available to students, we need to make sure that there's accountability across the district to ensure that students who are at risk, to, to ensure that students who are at risk or need help or getting those extra services that they need. Um, additionally, in, in addition to those things, I think the district should create partnerships with professionals and, and community uh, leaders, not only community leaders, but members of the community to also come in and help provide extra help to students. Mr. Fletcher, I'm going to start with you this time. Okay. We all know that good teachers make students smarter, right? Currently, Hickman Wales is the lowest paying district for teachers in this area. What are you planning on doing about this situation, the issue? And, and also, Address the issue for the recruitment of teachers. Oh, teachers are probably one of the most 
important assets that we have is uh, my mother was a teacher for over 25 years. Uh, I know what teachers have to go through. Teachers do not get paid even close to what they what they deserve. Really? Not no, they don't. And I know. And, the, and, the, and, and the thing is, unless we have the funding to pay for them, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. And then it goes back to our initial issue on the funding. Um, when we're sitting there talking about kids coming in there and learning, how how does a te how does a teacher come in there and in the elementary level teach somebody in third grade? that's come over from another district that has a first grade learning, you know, level, and then then our district gets rated on that. And the teacher and the teacher gets, you know, called down because you're not teaching this child. It's 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 just a big vicious circle to do this. I you know I don't know what the answer is. Um, I think it, uh, teachers should be getting a lot more than they're getting. Um, but it goes back to what we're going to be getting from the state. It, um, they they're holding the purse strings, and then we have to. Then we have to, to the voters, show how we are, our fiduciary responsibility, how we are, how we are spending their money. Um, it's getting harder and harder to recruit new teachers. And, and no, it's getting harder and harder. And then the teachers, the tenure teachers that have been here, when we do get raises, it seems like they want to kind of push them off to the side, you know, push the experience off to the side. Um, it, it's it's a, you know, the chicken and the egg. You know, which came from, you know, I, I don't have the answer. I wish I did. Um, talking to state legislators and getting more money to teachers, changing the way the formula is is set up and how it is distributed. Um, there's so much things that we have to work with that, you know, I would love to give everybody more money on that and people that deserve it. Mr. Lowe, I want to really say this again. What are you doing to address the issues of the teacher recruitment? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I believe it was recruitment and salary, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I am fairly familiar with the salary schedule, both of the Hickman Mills District and the surrounding districts. Um, currently, obviously the salary schedule works based on your years of experience as well as your education level. But what comes to mind is for a fifth year teacher who has a master's degree, to teach in the Hickman Mills School District, they make $4,000 less than they would make in the Center School District, approximately $3,000 less than they would make in the Grandview School District, and about $1,500 less than they would make in the Raytown School District. Additionally, they don't get other incentive, incentives that they would get in those districts to go out and receive other national accreditations that some teachers might want to seek out and receive. If our district is gonna be effective and and in, when I say effective, I mean effective in getting the best teachers out there. We've got to do something about how we pay our teachers. When I gave those numbers, I was giving them to say simply, if we can find or make a way to increase teacher salary by $2,000 a year, $2,000 to $2,500 a year, instead of being at the bottom for teacher salary in these areas, we can be almost at the top. And when you're at the top, the teachers who are higher quality teachers, who have more experience, are going to want to come to your district because they're going to make more money. Obviously, because I am not as intertwined with the district and where the funding is, finding that money per teacher might be a difficult task. I don't deny that whatsoever. But I think it's something you've got to look at doing so that we can ensure we are providing the highest quality teachers possible and showing teachers that we appreciate the job that they do and that we're rewarding them for doing an excellent job. As far as recruitment of teachers, I think, I don't know how many of you are familiar, but UMKC has an urban teaching program. I think that would be a great place for us to start recruiting teachers who are coming straight out of college to go out and per pursue those students and give them opportunities to come into our district and practice and hone their skills so that when they graduate, they might want to come here and be the new echelon of teachers. Ms. Carroll. Yes, um, there is no doubt that we have to do something uh, in order to increase the pay of teachers, especially in the Hickman Bell School District. Um, I know that the past two, three, maybe even four years. No, take that back. Last year, we were able to give teachers somewhat of an increase, but the three years prior to that, we were not able to. Uh, it took some real tough 
choices and some tough decisions, but we as a board felt that we could not go another year without giving our dedicated teachers some type of increase. And I, I have to commend our teachers uh, that are in the district. I mean, they stood by us when times were tough and we could not give them any increases. I think that one of the things that we have to do is, uh, uh, along with increasing revenue so that we can pay teachers, as well as attract new teachers, we have to think out of the box in regards to raising revenues. I think that we have to think about how we can raise revenues so that we can afford to give teachers uh, the salary that they deserve. I mean, I believe that teachers deserve uh, a, a very good salary because we entrust them with the education of our children, which basically is going to be the future of, of the next generation. And for them to not make uh, a decent salary is just uh, uh, unconscionable to me. Uh, I believe that we have to try to recruit teachers. We have to try to do things as well in the community also. Uh, that's one of the problems with our community also is that we have suffered uh, the loss of, of uh, ta our tax base because businesses have moved. We've got the highest rate of foreclosures in this district and sales tax dollars are down. So we have to do something to increase those in order to make sure that we can provide a better salary for teachers. Thank you. We have one more question from the audience and then we'll give you a chance to sort of sum up. Mm -hmm. um, this question goes back to the safety and security uh, issue. Uh, what measures would you be willing to take to stop conflict, bullying, riots, and gang fights that are starting in the Hickman Mill School District, like on school grounds, but are being taken off school property into Ruskin Park? So this audience member would like to know, how can we improve security both within our school buildings as well as for our students as they move back to the community? Um, I believe it's Mr. Lowe's turn. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I believe that, as I stated earlier, I think it's important that we begin to not just provide off-duty officers, but provide full-time officers that are accountable to the district. As I was stating earlier, I believe if you start at that point, you can begin to develop relationships, quality relationships with students that will allow you to have foresight into, uh, into further activities that might take place, as you stated, um, after school or in Ruskin Park. Um, I'm trying to think of the whole question, I'm sorry. What was the first part of that question again? Um, what measures are you willing to take to stop bullying and violence on the school property as well as that spills off into the community? Thank you. Um, as far as bullying and violence is concerned, I think one of the things that we have to consider is we have to provide an environment that encourages students who want to be there and who want to learn to come to school and to do that. But if students aren't concerned with learning and coming to school to be productive, we have to take measures to ensure that those students can't come into our schools and negatively affect students who are there for the right reasons. If students are involved in bullying or violence both on and off campus, that needs to be taken into account and into consideration by the district. And if need be, those, those students should be ex expelled from school or sent to some sort of alternative program that can better meet the needs, that, the needs of that student um, as far as their education is concerned. We have to ensure that we are providing a policy and providing an environment for students that, that, that addresses the core issues, that addresses the issue of safety by getting the students who we know who are problem, problem causing students or students who are causing the environment to be unsafe out of those schools. Uh, and to do that effectively, I think a good start to that is employing the security, employing security who's accountable to both the principal, to the students, and to this district. When you begin to have security who is committed, who is involved, and who will be judged or will be held accountable for what they do and don't do, we can then begin to address issues of security and safety in a proactive and effective manner. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Well, I think that uh, uh, the Hickman Mill School Board and school district has, has begun to try to address safety issues in the schools. 
We have uh, put in metal detectors, unfortunately, I guess it's the day and time that we live in. Uh, mm -hmm. But we have uh, installed metal detectors in the school so that students, when they walk in, they go through a metal detector to make sure that they are not bringing any uh, thing in there that, uh, that they shouldn't be. Uh, we have uh, also uh, uh, secured the buildings to the extent that uh, most doors are locked uh, during school time so nobody can just walk into the buildings uh, without you know, checking in with the front desk are going through the proper procedures in regards to getting in. However, that does not mean that there's still not a lot of work to, to do. Uh, uh, one of my goals, uh, if we're elected to the board, is to, to take a, another look at uh, possibly putting in cameras, if possible. I, I think we have some cameras in some schools, but uh, I think that that's another avenue to look at. Uh, I think one of the other things to look at is uh, 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 when, when things happen off campus, which we really have not too much control over because once they leave our buildings, I mean, anything can happen. And especially, uh, uh, and unfortunately, you have parents that are encouraging kids to fight and to do things. And, and that's even a, a tougher problem to deal with when you insert a parent in the situation uh, with students having issues. So I think that we have to try to communicate better with parents to make sure that they are not instigating <coughs> these uh, instances. Or one of the other things, if we could ever find some money, uh, we might look at uh, maybe having some undercover uh, officers or something on, on certain buses or in certain areas so that they could drive along or ride along in case that something does happen and maybe help prevent some of these things from happening. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Fletcher. Well, you know, the cameras, uh, cameras were put in, and we do have cameras uh, uh, in the schools uh, put in during my tenure, and they have been very successful. One of the problems, and Daryl started to address it, is we have a society problem here. Uh, I think our schools on campus are very safe, and we take care of the kids on campus and very safe. It's, uh, we, there's a very great legal issue on what we can do off campus. And then when you do, and when Daryl started to say, when you have a parent driving a student to the fight, and it is well documented, what kind of problem you got there? Um, we have an area uh, in the, you know, in the around the Ruskin Ruskin area. Uh, I used to live live there for many years. It's right there in the middle of a community. Um, it's hard. It's hard to hold the district accountable for neighborhood problems. And that was what we originally brought police officers into the school. It wasn't for the safety of the kids. It was to keep to keep the outsiders from coming in. We didn't, uh, and I mean outsiders, adults getting involved in juvenile problems. That's one of the main reasons. The campus is very safe. It's once you get once you get over there, and there's a gray area on what we can do and what we can't do. I uh, take an issue on some of these police officers, and we do uh, we do have two in each one of the, the larger schools, but they're there constantly. They're there, and they do have a relationship with the kids, and we do find out about a lot of the stuff before it happens. So uh, yes, we we could always do a little bit better. But our society is changing constantly, and there's constant things that are going on. Um, but yes, I think we do a, a good job on security with the tools that we are given. Thank you. Each candidate will have two minutes to address the vote. To, I'm sorry, have two minutes. Two minutes, remember, two minutes. Addressing why the voters should select you as candidate. As Daryl. Well, as I uh, stated in my open, or started to state, because I didn't get a chance to finish it, uh, I've been in the Hickman Mills community for 27 years. I have been uh, involved in uh, a lot of the battles and the fights that this district has gone through, whether it's uh, back in the 90s when they were trying to put a dump over across from the Bannister Mall up until the, up to the uh, reconstruction of uh, the new 71 highway and uh, uh, I'm president of my homes association. 
So uh, I have uh, been very much involved in this community. I have a, a deep passion for trying to make sure that this community succeeds. And I want to continue to try to help make sure that students achieve because, as I mentioned before, uh, they are our future. They are our, our greatest asset. And uh, if we don't do more to help them achieve, then our whole society is going to uh, be in peril. Uh, I have, uh, like I said, worked tirelessly to try to make sure that this community is the best community that it can be. And as a board member, it has given me the opportunity to make sure that this community succeeds. And I want to continue that endeavor. So hopefully voters will see that I am committed to this district, I am committed to this community, and I will continue to work tirelessly to make sure that we succeed as a district and as a community. Thank you. Thank you. My family moved into the Hickman Mill School District in 1953 when Ruskin was still just a, a, a pasture. I went through the school system uh, and graduated from the school system, as did my two children, uh, the last one last year. Both of them are going to college, both of them had a very good education. I started some things here with the school district. I'm one of, you know, uh, along with uh, Mr. Curls, I, you know, we've been around here. We have seen the, we have seen the good times, we have seen the bad times. Uh, right now, we are in a time of transition. We have a, uh, a superintendent uh, that is going to be leaving the district, and we have to find a new one. Uh, I'm the only person that has been on the board that has gone through the superintendent search and the only one with any experience of going through the superintendent search. One, from a community when we brought Kirby Hall in, and the other aspects is when we brought the other superintendents in, Dr. Goodwin, Dr. Cooper, and Dr. Williams. I feel I'm very well qualified for it. I think I've done a good job in my tenure here. I'm constantly learning. I've been learning. I've, I think I've learned more in the last couple of years that I've been on the board on seeing how how the system works and where we need to fine tune things than I did in my previous tenure. And it's like being on the board is a work in progress. You're, you, it's a constantly evolving thing, and you're constantly learning and seeing how things change as society changes. You have to be able to adapt to it. I think I have adapted to it. I have adapted to it. I think I'm the uh, right person to stay on the job. Yes, thank you. I believe that the voters should select me because, as I stated before, I come to the to the board with a different background. I come to the board with a legal background, and I come to the board with a background and not actually working as an educator, but some experience, as I stated previously, working in the early childhood sector. And I do have a fairly good understanding of what is required to provide a quality education for students. I think that the district has done a great job to this point, but I think the district can do much better than it is right now. And we can do, as a community, as board members, and as all the employees of the district, we can do a better job of ensuring that our children receive a top-notch top education here in the Hickman Mill School District. I believe that if I, if I, I believe if I am elected to the board, that I can bring my skills and help create new policies that will allow not only the district to be more effective in educating children, which is our primary goal, but help the district ensure that it has a lasting effect, not only on the community, but on our city of Kansas City and our society as a whole. We have to understand that our children's education is the foundation for the rest of their life. As an attorney who works in the workers' compensation sector, every day I see people who've gone through high school, who have a high school degree, but can't read or write sufficiently to be educated or retrained how to do other jobs. And until we ensure that we are giving every child a quality education that will allow them to go out to seek out their goals and to succeed, we have all failed. That has to be our primary goal. Our goal can't be, cons we can't be concerned with what people might think, with all the outside problems of what goes on in society and homes. We have to do everything we possibly can to affect change for every, for every student in this district. All 6,500 students have a right and deserve to receive an adequate and quality education so that they can succeed in seeking out their goals as they go through life. Okay. Thank you. On behalf of the Kansas Reserve Branch of the uh, NAACP, we'd like to thank the candidates for appearing this evening.
And we'd also like to thank uh, Bonnie Mills, Mims, the um, president of the Hickman Mills School Board, who reminded us that perhaps we should have a forum in, in the Hickman Mills district this year. <laughs> she should. <sure. laughs> and then thanks also to all of those of you who are constituents and voters in, in the Hickman Mills district. Uh, thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are great. We have great talk. Should they hear?